and spices and smells and presentations. And of course, we are also influenced by all of our Arab neighbors and also um, the Arab population inside of Israel. So we have a pr very pretty menu for you tonight. And the only addition to what we did is we added some salad because um, no Israeli meal would be complete without salad. So part of our program is pre-recorded. We're gonna give you cooking segments and one of them we're going to do live, but not just yet. So when Danny told me that we were going to be pre-recording, I was in Tucson at the time with my family. So I took advantage of that and um, drafted my mom into um, recording one of the segments with me. That'll be coming up a little bit and that is the shakshuka. So we are gonna start off. Um, we're gonna take you through the meal. So the first thing we're gonna do is show you um, dates with goat cheese. Sure. So you can see how pretty the dish is. And I understand that Danny has shared the recipe with everybody. We have- Can um, you ask Danny if you could um, please spotlight my phone too? And then he's getting the upload. Sure. Danny, can you please spotlight Lisa Alpern's phone? Because she's going to give us the close-ups as we go through this on the live portion. Sure, sure. sure. Yay, thank you. So we have delicious dates with goat cheese. And the one thing we're going to try and do tonight is show you how you can elevate really simple ingredients into something beautiful presentation-wise. So the dates with goat cheese, and we're going to talk about it also in the um, recorded segment, beautiful with anything. You can have it with wine, an intimate gathering, or, um, or something bigger as well. It's more of a grown-up dish. And what's nice about everything we're doing is we can prepare almost everything ahead of time. And I'm just going to check in with Creighton and see if he's ready with our um, recording. Yes? He's trying. He's trying. So we are taking you through, uh, oh, there, I'm going to tell you there is a bonus dish, and Lisa's spotlighting it right now. And we decided that we needed to end the meal with something sweet, because Israelis love their sweets. They have a big sweet tooth. And this is an iconic Israeli dessert. It is called Kadure Chocolat. Um, balls of chocolate and you can see they're coated in coconut, in cocoa powder, you can coat it in anything you like. And when we actually show this segment, you can see how easy it is to make and to enlist your kids into doing it if that's your preference. And anything you can, you see here tonight, except for the salad, you can pretty much um, make ahead of time. You can keep these in your freezer also. And um, so it makes for easy entertaining. And of course, Israelis, just like any good Jewish home, come around, come by, you don't have to call, and um, they will open up, we call it Liftoch Shulchan, open up a spread for you. Yes? We're almost there. So I think what we might do in the meantime is why don't we go ahead and show you our live cooking segment. And we're gonna be making, you're gonna take simple pita bread, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna elevate it with za'atar and olive oil in a very, very simple way. So I'm going to start with pita bread. You can use naan, you can use pocketless, whatever you like. And what I'm going to do, I have three ingredients in addition to the pita bread. I've got olive oil. Use really good olive oil. This one is from Tunis. I just happen to like it because it's um, a little bit pungent, which I think just adds to the dish. The second ingredient is going to be our za'atav which is a um, Middle Eastern spice. And you can see how pretty it is inside. It smells so good. Um, and that's gonna add some color as well as some flavor. And the last thing we're gonna use is the granulated garlic. In our hummus and shakshuka recipes, we actually use fresh garlic or minced garlic, but here for ease of preparation and also um, so it's uniform across the bread, we're gonna use the granulated um, garlic. So those are our ingredients. So you have your pita bread and we're gonna get started. We're gonna pour our olive oil and you need a pastry brush to do this most easily. I've improvised and used a spoon before and gloves, but today we have the advantage of having our own brush. So I'm gonna go ahead. And what's nice about this recipe is we're gonna show you two things you can do out of the exact same ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna do is the pita bread, but it's the exact same recipe. So I'm gonna brush these um, generously, liberally, with a layer of olive oil. And again, you wanna use good olive oil for this. 
for the smell, for the taste. And the reason you want to get it all over the pita bread is because it will help the spices adhere to the pita. So now that you've done that, and these really are simple recipes that anyone can do, and they're pretty and super tasty. So the next thing I'm going to add is our granulated garlic. I'm a big fan of garlic. Don't be afraid if it's a lot. It's kind of like garlic bread, yeah? So you don't have to be afraid of it. All right, and now we're gonna add our za'atar. By itself, za'atar is a little bit pungent if you have too much, but it works nicely with the pita bread and garlic. So I'm gonna put a layer of it here. And we have preheated our oven to 400 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on a baking sheet that we have lined with parchment paper. And if you're serving this as part of a meal, you could go ahead and have half or a whole one. It depends on your crowd. If you have teenagers like I do, they like a whole one plus. So this is ready to go into our oven. We're gonna put it in for um, five minutes initially. And you don't want it to harden. You just want it to get a little bit toasty, a little bit crunchy on the edges. 400 degrees for about five or six minutes. It depends on your oven. You would do a check-in at about five minutes. So the next thing we're gonna do, keep in mind that recipe, I'm not gonna put it in just yet. We're gonna repeat the process and we're gonna add one additional step and change our cooking time and our temperature slightly. And we're gonna get a whole new delicious and pretty results. So I turned, I flipped over the pita bread cause I like a flatter surface particularly when I'm cutting the pita chips. But what's nice about this dish is that I'm cutting it by hand so the pieces are not uniform. So it's, it looks rustic, it tastes delicious, and it just makes for a nicer presentation. It looks homemade because it is. All right, again, we brushed it with our olive oil. We're gonna cover it with garlic powder, uh, granulated garlic. I don't recommend using just the powder because it's a little bit too um, thin. You need a little bit of texture to it. We're gonna add our za'atar. And what I'm gonna do here is now I'm gonna cut these. I'm gonna cut these into 10 or 12 pieces. It depends on your preference. And in, for ease, I'm gonna just stack them and cut them, which is fine. It's, it's okay if you have a little bit of the oil on the bottom. So I'm gonna hold it down slightly and I'm just gonna cut. And the one important thing to remember when you're doing this is to make sure your sheet is lined first of all, but also you wanna make sure that these are placed single layer on your cooking sheet and your cookie sheet. All right, so I'm gonna cut these maybe into three pieces. And you can make them smaller, bigger, it all depends. So whereas the pita bread itself, you would serve maybe a half per person or a whole, here because we're gonna assume that it's part of a bigger meal, each person will probably have three or four um, pita chips. So a little goes a long way here. And what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna place these on our baking sheet. So they actually wouldn't go into the oven the same temperature as the pita browns. We would increase our temperature to 425 and increase our baking time, begin at six minutes, and then we can keep adding. It depends on your oven and also your preference. I like these darker um, and toastier, and they will harden as they cool. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna head on over to our oven. And what we're going to show you now is actually the, the, the miracle of Zoom is we're going to show you the, the finished product. So in order to make this a beautiful presentation, 
we've added our hummus and we're not actually gonna show you a demo of the hummus. We're actually going to just give you the recipe and we've added a surprise recipe at the end. So we have our hummus, we have some crudite, I ended up putting um, some carrots and we're gonna put our pita rounds. Let's see where we put those. There are two other ones that are already prepared, but here we go. You're gonna put there, it's best to serve these warm, but again, you can make these ahead of time and just heat them up a couple minutes on a high heat. And then I'm gonna distribute our pita chips here. And they really are crunchy, right? You can open and see that they're crunchy. We're good? Right. All right, so we're gonna move on. I'm gonna finish plating this and show you how beautiful this dish is. So here you go. And you're gonna save your bread, your pita bread. You can save it for our shakshuka, which is coming up in just a few minutes. And now Creighton is gonna go ahead and highlight our first recorded segment. And that is gonna be our dates with the goat cheese. It's happening. It's happening. I think we have to highlight. Can we spotlight Creighton? I don't want to spotlight Creighton. Nobody <laughs> ever wants to. Please to share the screen and turn on the. You need to share your screen. I have share. Oh, he's he's. We all done. It just stopped going yet. We uh, don't see the presentation, Rachel. We don't see anything. We haven't started second. yet, Mom. Walk back over Hang on, we're, we're, we're waiting for the technical difficulty. So I can tell you about the dish in the meantime. We see Bruce Tomar. Are you going to cook, Bruce? <laughs> so if you're spotlighting Creighton, he's going to see, um, you're going to see the videos that we have, hopefully. He's screen sharing for us. In theory. I don't see anything. It's the dark screen. It did work really well in rehearsal. All right. So let me, I can tell you in the meantime what we've done. So what we did also. If you can spotlight me for a second till spot till, but he's screen sharing, yes? Okay, so as soon as he comes back, we will go ahead and show you the rest of our, um, our goodies. So does anyone have any questions in the meantime? Anything show up in the chat? Ah, okay. there's Here something. We go. <laughs> It did work well in rehearsal. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah, all good. Where can I visit? There are several kinds on Google. No, we can't see it. Share it to my Google Drive, and I can see it right now. Creighton can share it to your Google Drive. Okay, so we have a backup plan now. Where can you buy Zaatar? You can buy Zaatar at any global market or Middle Eastern store. I've also seen Zaatar and the good kind at Whole Foods. So you have lots of options. And some have sesame and some have don't, uh, some don't, some are spicier than others, but you have lots of variety if you go to a Middle Eastern market. You love the Zatar Trader Joe's. Ooh, I didn't know they had it at Trader Joe's. You know, I put Zatar in salad also, and you can, um, anytime you have any cheeses or soft cheeses, 
You can drizzle a little bit of olive oil and put za'atar on top, serve it with some tomatoes. It's like a, a Middle Eastern version of a caprese salad. The same idea, I suppose. And then if you add um, salad and some bread, it's a meal. Do you ship? Well, Galid, I could probably get you firsthand stuff. That's my sister. All right. So all of the ingredients you could actually buy at the supermarket, except for maybe the Zata where you have to go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or a specialty store. Uh, nothing, I guess, is the one-stop shop, but it's pretty close with what we are making. Okay, they need to make it so I can share a screen. Do you need to be made a co-host? Uh, no. Just share screen. Just share screen. Does Danny have to do that? So whoever the host is just has to make it so I can share. Oh, there it goes. But can we start at the beginning? I hold on. Yep. Well, that's coming off of his, not mine. Oh. Because no one's made it so I can share a screen yet. Danny, can you make it so I can share a screen? Uh, sure. Who is that that's asking me? It's Lisa, L-I-E-S-S-A. -S 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 -A. Yeah, you are a co-host, so you can do whatever you want. No, oh, no you have to give me permission to share a screen. The only the host can do that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So if you go to security. All you have to do is go to security and check the box that says share screen. Everyone can share screen. All good. This is not my first rodeo. This will be fine. <laughs> we have complete confidence in you. That's great. I just need someone to give me permission to share the screen. There we go. I can share screen. Creighton needs to stop sharing his screen. Okay. Get ready Come now. on, Creighton. One job. Right. I know. Back in I'm going to share sound. I'm going to share. I'm going to go to my recent drive. Hold on one second. I'm just going to pull it up. Creighton, here we go. Ready? Let me know if you can see it. Can you guys see it? Super easy, super beautiful. Yes. Great for a drink with friends. I prepared it as a first course for a wedding. And we're going to be making stuffed dates with goat cheese and crushed pistachios, all put together with a simple syrup. The recipe is going to be found in the chat. And I'm excited to show you. So I like cooking with dates. Um, not only a whole date, but I also use the Ceylon, which is the date honey. Um, and in the Torah, when we're talking about uh, the land of milk and honey, uh, talking about Israel, we're most likely referring to date honey and not honey from the bees. So we have ancient roots in our um, tamal, which is one of the seven species. And I use this for savory dishes, such as um, chicken and fish. And I also use it to top um, desserts. So today we're not gonna be using the honey, we are gonna be using our whole dates. Um, you can find these pitted, but I prefer to use the ones that we pit ourselves because they are usually firmer in texture and a little bit bigger, which makes for a nicer presentation. So you can see up close how beautiful this dish is. And if you wanted to, you could actually put it in the little paper flutes and um, serve it that way. And we're gonna make a few together very easy, super delicious, goes beautifully with wine, um, sweet tea, um, anything you like. So the first step we're gonna do is you're gonna um, prepare your simple syrup. I've prepared it ahead of time. It's just equal parts water and sugar and you boil it for about 10 minutes and let it cool and set it aside. And this is going to help the crushed nuts adhere to the top of your date and goat cheese. So the first step is we're gonna take our dates and we're gonna pit them ourselves. And so you can buy them in any quantity. I, get, I actually buy my stuff in big quantities because I cater. And um, you can see how big they are, all of these. Even, I like that they're different sizes. They're not gonna be uniform and that's just um, because everything is natural. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pit some of these and you're gonna cut it, but not all the way through. You wanna make sure it still sticks together. Um, so not all the way through to the half and you're gonna just remove the pits. Make sure you do that because that would be an unpleasant surprise. And so it'll stick you, so make sure you have a, a, a damp cloth nearby and sometimes you just take the edge off. I don't see any, oh, here we have. So we're gonna make sure to take that off too. All right, so we're gonna do a couple more and then we're gonna do this together. And it really is a beautiful presentation. If you're um, wanting to use this for a, an introduction for a meat meal, then a good substitute would be marzipan. Or you can go ahead and fill it instead of the goat cheese, just put a, a, a half of a walnut inside. So we're gonna, let's say we're gonna do five or six of these together. So again, I'm opening it up, taking off the end if it's there. And so we are ready with our dates. And our next step is we're gonna get our goat cheese. And the goat cheese is super strong, has a strong presence, and so a little bit is gonna go a long way. So I'm gonna cut it into about half inch rounds, and then I'm gonna cut these into four. So a little really does go a long way. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna take one of the dates and I'm gonna put a piece of the goat cheese in. And once it's in, I'm gonna use, in, I'm gonna use my knife. And if, if accidentally you've cut your date almost through, the goat cheese is gonna hold it back together again. So here, I'm gonna put that in, I'm gonna squeeze it and line these up, and it's kind of like an assembly line. It's much easier to do it this way rather than do one at a time, running all through the steps. So we're gonna do one step at a time, I'm gonna do a couple more, and then we're gonna finish this together. It's more of an adult uh, dish than it is for children, but they can have the dates without the goat cheese. I think goat cheese is an acquired taste. I think it's delicious if you've never had it, don't be afraid to give it a try. So our next step, now that we have our prepared dates, is we're gonna dip them in our simple syrup. And then our final step is to dip it into the crushed pistachios. All right, so we're gonna take one, and you're not gonna dip it all the way through, about half. So you dip it in, shake off the excess uh, simple syrup, and you're gonna push it into your crushed, I like the bigger pieces as well. And that's your finished product. And again, you can put it in a fluted paper cup. They have small ones, um, it sits beautifully, or we're just gonna add it to our pretty dish right here. Again, you're gonna take it, you're gonna dip it into the simple syrup, and you're gonna push it well into the crushed pistachios. And there you go. So I've done this for a formal wedding where people have um, come and they find it on their plate along with um, a small bareka and a stuffed grape leaf. I've had it at events where we walk around with a dish together with um, some champagne. It goes beautifully. It was an engagement party. Or you can have this with some friends. This can be your first course. It even goes nicely with beer. And it's super quick, super simple and it's really delicious. And if you have excess, of course, you can take it off. And I would suggest if you're gonna prepare this ahead of time, that you store it in the refrigerator. And before you eat, you're gonna take it out about a half an hour beforehand to bring it down a little bit to room temperature. Any leftovers you wanna wrap really well in saran wrap, and keep in the fridge, should, should keep for a few days. So here is our finished product, our stuffed dates, beautiful to the eye, really delicious. Um, it's a beautiful opening for any meal, and enjoy the tab one. So okay, I, I stopped the share, and I know that Rachie, you're gonna be on now. And then I'm going to come back in just a bit and share some more.
Right, so I'm, I'm just for a minute and then we're gonna share the, the next recipe, yeah? Sounds great. Okay, so I just wanted to, we've had our, our a little wine because we have a little bit of wine here, a little Moscato, which is my preference. We have our dates with the goat cheese and I'm just mixing up some salad, took some fresh vegetables, made some salad dressing, just olive oil, lemon juice, um, salt, pepper, and I'm gonna pour it in. And if you're making Israeli salad, you do not wanna dress it ahead of time because it'll get a little bit soggy, maybe about 20 minutes, half an hour before you eat. So I'm just going to um, add the dressing in. Oh, the pillow threw up on. Right, um, Creighton says, please spotlight him. Yeah. He is. He's, he is. We, we see an empty, we don't see anything, but it's Creighton's screen. Well, try, the other Creighton. try the other Creighton, he says. <laughs> and and this is our salad. So now we have two of our dishes ready and we are going to make shakshuka. So if Lisa can please be um, on the spotlight again and she's going to share the shakshuka recipe. I'm just noticing that the recording is a little bit slower than we had initially prepared it. So we're just gonna bear with it. Give me one second, I gotta get it pulled up and I will be happy to share the next thing. Creighton's yeah. taking advantage of the fact that he's off camera to, to sample. So yes. So this Let's is stop. Good step. so this is our shakshuka recipe. So the first recipe we're going to share with you today is for shakshuka, which is uh, poached eggs. In a we hear it, but we don't see it. Lisa. Hundreds of different types of shakshuka in Israel. There are restaurants dedicated to. Okay, well, right, right. Yeah, I just brought that. Yeah. Where's Harry Potter? There we go. Different types. Nirvana pan. Shakshuka next to the soup in Jaffa. And uh, the one that we're going to Hey, who are you talking to, Harry? It's a little chunkier than some might be familiar with. It has peppers and diced tomatoes garlic, all the good stuff. And we are gonna show you the pan we're using so we don't do anything small in our family. So we're actually gonna double the recipe and I'm gonna show you the pan and show you my beautiful sous chef, with, uh, sous chef, which is my mom, Sarah. So let me show you the pan first. So this is the pan that we are using. And um, it's originally a paella pan. And so what we're gonna do here, this is gonna hold about 10 to 12 eggs. Our recipe, we're going to make 12. I would say in a regular shakshuka recipe, you would make anywhere between four and six eggs. So here we're gonna make 12 eggs. And let me show you my beautiful mom. Say hi, mom. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so my mom, Sarah, is gonna show you how to make this. We have our eggs and we have parsley, Later on, we're gonna add our diced tomatoes, salt, lots of ground pepper. We have kamun cumin, paprika, and we add a little, you can add a teaspoon of sugar. We're actually adding just a little tiny bit of um, monk fruit sweetener because sometimes tomatoes on their own tend to be a little bit bitter. So mom, what's your favorite kind of shakshuka? Chunky, smooth, what do you like? Chunky. <laughs> Chunky, how we like and, it? Oh, I like also my eggs, a little running. <laughs> Not well done eggs, but lots of people like the well done eggs. So it depends. So that's also a preference. Some people prefer the eggs in their shakshuka more um, well done, yeah. poached, let's say the equivalent of five minutes. Some people like it runnier. I prefer to have it runnier. Um, and then you can serve it with crusty bread or my dad likes to have it with couscous or with rice or even just on its own. So it's first delicious. we're gonna turn on, um, heat up our pan just for a little bit. So because it's such a big pan, we're using two burners. Um, any frying pan is gonna work here, just shallow. You don't want it too deep, um, but you don't want to, to spritz all around, which tomatoes have a tendency to do. So you just have to babysit it a little bit. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon of 
extra virgin olive oil. But if you don't have that, you can use regular oil too. Mm -hmm. It'll just affect your, the flavor just right. right. So here we are with our pepper and it's sizzling nicely. So we're gonna adjust the temperature. And then we're gonna pop in the red onion and get started on mincing our garlic. If sure. We might have to um, lower the flame a little bit while we get our garlic going because we don't want anything to burn. Oh, my mom says we should have the garlic ready to go. That's true. To come out. All right, so here come our red onions. And that's a rogue parsley in there. Those will come later. You don't want to put the parsley in ahead of time. You're going to drop that in once you add your diced tomatoes. Now we are ready to add our garlic to the pan. And again, you don't want to cook the garlic too long because it can be bitter um, and also it can burn. So you just have to watch it. Now it's, you're, you're actively cooking because if you leave this alone for just a minute, things can burn and it really does affect the final product. So you can see that things are bubbling and happy and my mom is gonna add the chopped parsley. And you're gonna use for one recipe about a half of a cup of chopped parsley and we're adding um, about one cup of chopped parsley, which is a, a big bunch where you remove the stems and then just chop it up. And again, not too fine. We're gonna give it a stir and then we're gonna grab the cover and then we're gonna reduce our flame and simmer. All right, we are checking in with our shakshuka base. And this is something you can prepare a few days in advance. Just um, add the eggs right before you are ready to eat. What do you think, Mom? Yes? Yes, We're yes. ready to go? Yeah, ready, ready to go. All right, we are mm. ready to go. And our next step is we're going to create little wells in the sauce. And we're going to drop in our eggs one at a time. And again, because it's such a large pan, we're going to add 12 eggs to the mix. Just make like a little space. Yeah, like a little whales cut. Yeah, like this. Start with three of them. And go from there. Fabulous. It's not her first time. <laughs> And again, some people prefer to have it runny, some prefer to have it more poached. And some they mix it like a... Right, and some traditions have it um, mixing it up kind of like an omelet in the center of the yeah. of the pan. So we are a house divided. My mom likes hers uh, runny and my dad likes his a little more well done. So, yeah. all right, so that is our last egg. And we have plenty of liquid in the pan, you can see, and we are going to cover it. And we're going to check in in about five minutes and see where Ready we to are. check in. I think, yeah. yeah. All right, so it's been five minutes exactly. We're checking in. We had turned the flame up to medium low simmer. And now we are going to just turn it down a little bit and check in with our eggs and see how they are. So you can see how beautiful it is. And the ones that we put in last are going to be runnier than the others. So that and side is runny more than the other. Right. And at this point, you could probably turn it off if you're satisfied with the level of doneness, which it looks like we are. All right. So you can go ahead and turn it off, Mom. All right. And we are just going to dish up and show you what it looks like in the individual portion. We're going to take two eggs. And again, you can serve it up with whatever your preference is. So you add two, about two eggs, and we're going to add some of the sauce. Mm -hmm. And then in Hebrew we say, Betavon. And if you want, you can put some parsley on top too. Or you can do that. Show us, Mom. <laughs> okay, you're free. Enjoy. Bon appetit. 
so I saw a question in the chat on whether this is a breakfast dish. So in Israel, breakfast can be huge. If you've gone to a hotel in Israel or a Beit Cafe, a coffee house, uh, you'll order uh, coffee or tea, and then you'll usually split a big breakfast. They'll have something like shakshuka or some kind of egg, cheeses and breads and jam and even tuna and avocado. Um, so this can be a breakfast dish. It can also be lunch. It can also be dinner. Israelis usually have their main meal in the afternoon. So this could be a nice uh, um, light dinner dish as well. So we have one more dish. So we can show you the progress so far of what we have ready. And uh, I, we can't see it. All right, so I'm just gonna show you so far. So we have our salad, which we dressed, olive oil and lemon juice dressing. And we started with our dates with the goat cheese with a little bit of wine. We have our beautiful shakshuka, which again, you can make everything ahead of time except for the eggs and then add them. Um, there are restaurants in Israel that are dedicated just to um, shakshuka. There's one outside of the shuk, the market in Tel Aviv. It's called Doktor Shakshuka. Um, you can go in, there are literally dozens of recipes. And what they usually do is they prepare it in a, a cast iron skillet, whatever your preference is. You can have spicy, you can have eggplant in it, whatever you like. They'll pop the eggs in, put them in the broiler, um, and then serve it to your dish with, with some really good bread. So this is our shakshuka. You can see it's really a beautiful dish and it smells so good and it's pretty filling. And I like that we're focusing on all things fresh also. So here we have our, um, our hummus right here, which you will have the recipe for. And we have lots of garlic in here, olive oil. Our pita rounds that we just made and we elevated simple pita bread just with the magic of a few ingredients. And by leaving it in longer in the oven, we have our pita chips as well. And I'm also serving it just with some um, vegetables, some crudite. So the last thing we have to make is our um, kadore chocolate, our dessert. And this is what they look like. So we're gonna, if Lisa, are you still here, Lisa? Can you run the last one? And we are gonna share our um, kadore chocolate, our um, chocolate balls. What we have here is a bonus recipe because you can't really end any meal, particularly an Israeli meal because Israelis love their sweets without some kind of dessert. So we are gonna make a very simple dessert that everybody loves. It's called kadoue chocolate, um, balls of chocolate. And you can coat them in all kinds of things, um, little sprinkles, and some people have even seen M&Ms, but I'm gonna um, choose my favorite here, which is shredded sweetened coconut. So we are gonna start with one stick of melted either butter or margarine or coconut oil. And I've decided to make this a parv recipe, non-dairy. So I'm using one stick of margarine. I went ahead and melted it in the microwave and I really like using um, glass bowls for this. Our next step is we're gonna combine the rest of our ingredients. We have half a cup of granulated sugar, we have a third of a cup of milk. You can use regular milk, almond milk, soy milk, and I'm using soy milk. My purpose. And I've tried this way and it really does not affect the taste. So you can feel free to experiment. Uh, you can either put brandy or any other um, liqueur or alcohol and vanilla. So I'm putting in um, brandy right here. And our next step I'm gonna mix this together. Now we're ready to add our uh, cocoa and just use fine cocoa powder. Um, I think we are using Hershey's today, but whatever you have in the house is fine. So we're putting a third of a cup of the cocoa powder in there. And then we're gonna mix that up and then we are ready to add. And this is great because it's no bake. Kids love to make this together with parents. It's a win-win all around. Plus, everybody likes to eat it. Remember that. No bake. It's eggs. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to mix it just a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be uniform, but I'm trying just to get rid of the, the big chunks of the cocoa powder. It'll all get absorbed. Okay. There are no eggs in this recipe. For just a minute. And what happens is, um, when we're done mixing, we're going to put it into the refrigerator for about half an hour. And what happens is the margarine or whatever oil or fat you're choosing to use 
hardens as it cools and that's going to give us give us the form and the texture of the Kadoe chocolate as the final product. All right. So I think we're going to set this aside for just a minute. And now we're going to take our biscuits. So I've seen people make this with vanilla wafers, with um, other cookies, but if you can get these, these are the best ones to use. Um, these are cookies that every Israeli kid will recognize. They're Kedem Tea Biscuits. Simple, simple cookies. You can get them in different flavors. These happen to be vanilla. And I'm gonna drop them in the food processor. You could also do this if you wanted in a Ziploc with a rolling pin, and I just wanna crush these. So I need um, two packages. It's almost 250 um, milligrams. And I'm gonna let this pulse and then I'm gonna add the rest of it. And these can be purchased in the supermarket that has closer to I think I want it even a little bit smaller than that. So now it's um, rough crumbs. So now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to add the rest of these. So I'm adding um, two packages of the tea biscuits. And again, if you don't have a food processor, you don't have to worry about it because um, a rolling pin is also actually something fun that the kids can do on their own. It's nice that this is a nice big um, food processor. So I'm going to lock this and I'm going to pulse. just a little bit more. And it's almost like sand in the end. And again, if you're going to do this by hand, you're going to get um, bigger pieces and that's fine too. In the end, it all comes out looking good and still a fan favorite. So now I'm going to pour this into our wet ingredients to get it all in. And then I'm going to mix this together. And when I'm done and it's all incorporated, I'm going to set it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Ideally, you want this to sit in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. If you can't, that's no big deal. Um, maybe afterward you can put it in the fridge. It depends also on the temperature of your house and how quickly you're going to be eating these. Sometimes you can make them ahead and put them in the freezer. It all works. All right, so I, this is the part where you're going to use your hands. And what you're going to do is you're going to wet your hands in between each ball that you're creating. And you're going to take about, I'm going to say that's about a, a teaspoon's worth. And you're going to roll it in the coconut. So again, you can choose what you like. Some people put it in cocoa powder, which is also really tasty, or little tiny sprinkles. And you're going to put it... I'm going to put it straight into our little cups. I'm going to wet my hands again. And you want to try and make them uniform, but again, it doesn't matter. They're going to get eaten very quickly, so you don't have to worry about that. So again, we're going to put it with the coconut. And all the ones we're going to do today are with coconut. I'm going to do a few more. And you can picture how your kids are going to love doing this. And everybody can contribute, from the oldest to the youngest. What I really like about these is they can complement any kind of meal, particularly on a picnic, or if you even if you had something a little bit heavy, one of these will suffice to give you to satisfy your um, sweet tooth. Rabbi Abraham, if you are in the building, you can come over and get samples. And because we're making them all by hand, we're going to call them rustic, which is nice. And Lisa, no, I did not. All right, let's just do one more. I like the odd number being presented.
And when you're finished, you want to just wipe off your hands, and we're going to plate this right here. Cadore chocolate. The recipe should be in the chat. That's our bonus, so we can finish off our meal with a sweet memory. Betavon. Okay, I'm back. So I'm just going to show you, we did go ahead and make a couple with the cocoa powder, um, mostly just for a little bit of visual effect, but also the cocoa powder is a little bit um, bitter and that's more uh, serving to our adult tastes. And so hopefully you will enjoy. I'm creating a sample. <laughs> so again, um, if anyone here at B'nai Moon is in the building, you're welcome to come on over. We will mask up and you can come over and uh, Creighton's giving you the thumbs up. So um, thank you for sharing our meal tonight. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I think the takeaway is it's, it's simple to elevate um, ing uh, good ingredients into something even more beautiful. And it's, it's easy to get other people involved in the cooking process, which just makes it even happier. So thanks for hanging out. So uh so lots and lots and lots of thank yous uh first of all uh lisa uh hey lisa th thank you for uh helping us with the technical and uh congregation bene amuna in st louis for giving us the facilities and uh big thank you to creighton cohen who recruited rachel for us um there he is <laughs> He's such a character. And Rachel's mom, thank Sarah. you for, uh, so there was an incredible, I'm, I think most of the, you that were on this call tonight can appreciate there was an incredible amount of work that went into this, a couple of technical hiccups, but overall uh, fabulous, fabulous presentation. Um, and it was, uh, I can tell you, they, they put a lot, a lot of hours into this. So uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. This is all volunteer, and all of our webinars are always done volunteer. So, and food looks absolutely delicious. So we're all gonna come over to Creighton's house and uh, have some before we, you eat we will, share, we will share the chocolate recipe. And I just wanna thank Danny and, and everybody on your end for giving us the opportunity to share a little bit of Israel on Israel's birthday and Yom so, with right. Everybody. So a couple of things. So we're going to stay on. Um, and so for those of you that would like to just hang out, schmooze a little bit, um, we're, we're, I'm going to keep the screen open. So don't feel like you have to rush. Rachel, if you can stay on, it'd be wonderful. And, I'm here. Uh, and we're going to, you can, everyone can take themselves off of mute and we can just chat. Um, so there's no coincidence that we had this event tonight. The reason we have this event tonight, it, as Rachel just said, it is Erev Yom Ha'atzma'ut. Today was Yom Ha'zikaron, uh, which is the day of, uh, last week we had Yom HaShoah. So there's a method to the madness here in the Jewish calendar. Um, we had Yom HaZikaron today and tomorrow we celebrate the 73 years of Israeli independence if I did the math right now. So, um, so it is a special day uh, in, the, in the Jewish world, in Israel, and certainly in the Galut as well. So, uh, uh, so thank you again. Rachel, you did a great job. You certainly, you. Um, uh, when I sent this out to the FJMC, do you know a guy called Jay Englander? I know Jay very well. <laughs> yeah, so he said, oh! She taught my kids bas mitzvah. She's an Israeli dance teacher, and he's on the call tonight too. So, so I you just, obviously are a very, very talented person. And the pinnacle of recognition is that Creighton likes you. I don't know if that's a good thing, <laughs> but Creighton Cray generally Cray doesn't speak very thank highly thank of people. Very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, it's it's mutual. Yes. Great. So. No, you're just. Saying. I'm just saying that because he's here, but yeah. He's doing the dishes though, so that's all right. Debbie <laughs> Dalen says hi. Hi, Debbie Dalen. Okay, so um, uh, on behalf of our president, Tom Sudo, who's also on a call, who this was actually his idea to do an Israeli thing on Yom Ha'atzma'ut. 
Thomas some great ideas. Um, if you'd like this, uh, we actually, you know, you know, I couldn't re I help myself. We actually have a virtual convention coming up between June 6th and June 13th. And one of the evenings we're having is an Israeli wine event. So part of our cooking webinar. So all you have to do is sign up for the virtual convention, go on to the FJMC homepage and it'd be right there. And there'll be a lots and lots of activities. And one of them is, uh, is more Israeli uh, flavored cooking and wine drinking. So that should be a lot of fun as well. All right, so um, I'm going to leave the chat. I'm going to leave this open. And so Danny, uh, Danny, I'm going to help you promote convention a little bit. So at convention, we have Jeff, Jeff Morris, and his wife Jody. Jeff is the owner of Covenant Winery. And he's also a he's written, over 10, he's written over ten cookbooks. His yeah. most recent one is called the, the Covenant Cookbook. So we'll, we'll enjoy cooking some hors d'oeuvres with him, and then tasting some wine with those hors d'oeuvres. Cool. Sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So for those of you that'd like to stay on, uh, the formal program is over. Thank you again, Rachel. You did a fabulous job. Yoshikov. Yoshikov, Rachel. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions. And thank you again to Lisa. Mad props Wherever to Lisa. Lisa <laughs> her computer saved the day. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Very well done. You got thank her you, appetite up. <laughs> Yeah, and if, sure. you're, if you're here in St. Louis at the moment, come on over. Yeah, we're, we're what did you have the me? salad? Because we didn't see the salad. Oh, let me show you. Let me show oh. you the salad. So I didn't include a couple of things that I like to just because I didn't have it. So it, it, in maybe. So come on, Craig. One job. So can you see? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So in the salad. We have lettuce. Lettuce is not the star of the show, usually in an Israeli salad. I'll clean up the wine you spilled, Rachel. Right, okay, and the olive oil I spilled earlier. <laughs> um, so we have lettuce, and, and it depends how you like it. You can chop it small or, or bigger pieces. Americans seem to like bigger pieces. Um, and I have um, cherry tom or grape tomatoes that I cut small. I have uh, cucumber. I have a little red onion, but I don't usually add onion to the salad. And I like to add mint, fresh mint, and fresh parsley. And then I make my own dressing. So that's how you know we're not a typical uh, from St. Louis family. There's no bottle dressing in our house. And I didn't grow up with bottle dressing either. Um, even though my dad's from Fargo, North Dakota, he appreciates uh, the, the homemade dressing. So I just brought today olive oil, um, lemon, fresh lemon, squeezed lemon. I put a little bit of gar uh, granulated garlic lots of ground pepper and um, and some salt. So it's super easy and I just dress it a little bit before we eat it. And Israelis tend to have salad almost at every at every meal to complete it all. Thank you. Sure. You want me four of these? Creighton's eating all of the dates. No, we'll take them home to my wife. <laughs> you can take everything. She loves dates. You can take uh, everything for Plia. <laughs> If you don't like uh, uh, goat cheese, how about cream cheese? You can use cream cheese. Um, one thing, so I don't know if you're familiar with the Mimuna tradition. Mimuna is a Moroccan holiday that is uh, recognized in Israel, celebrated in Israel. Um, Moroccan Jews brought the tradition over from uh, Morocco. And it is the celebration of the end of Pesach when we can actually have bread, they make a special bread. and they have lots and lots of little sweets uh, that are, most of them are already pre-made, so they're made without flour. So what they would have is they would have a date that's inside with marzipan, which is almond paste, and you can color it uh, and, and roll it in um, sugar, and then that elevates it as well. It's really tasty. You can just put a walnut inside if you like, instead of the goat cheese. And um, I've had kids who put chocolate. I don't like it as much, but but they do. That gets them to eat a date. So, you know, goat cheese is a very much an, an acquired taste. Can the shakshuka be scaled down to one person? So I'll tell you, so, yes, yes. And what you can do is actually make the base ahead of time. 
the recipe that we have shared is for um, four to six people. Just eat, you can even cut that in half or make it and, and have that into two containers and you can keep it in the freezer. So my mom, when she makes it, she's got a paella pan, but a smaller one for when she makes it for, for the, just the two of them, my, for my parents together. And yes, you can absolutely scale it down. And so when you are next in Israel, be sure to visit um, Dr. Shakshuka uh, in Tel Aviv. I don't know where else they have locations, but it's an experience for sure. And don't be afraid to make any of these dishes. They're not daunting at all. They're super user-friendly, uh, particularly the shakshuka. So I have made shakshuka for uh, two or 300 kids at, at a summer camp. And there's no fancy cutting of vegetables. There's no diced anything. What we do is we take um, tomato sauce and we add um, granulated garlic, paprika, cumin, salt, pepper, a little bit of oil to it, cook it up and, and poach the eggs in the sauce and everybody loves it. So again, just use what you have in the house. You don't have to stress if you don't have something. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so I actually do this also with non-Jewish groups. I go into churches and I've gone um, different youth groups because I think it's a really nice way to introduce them into the beautiful kaleidoscope that is, um, that is, is Israeli society. And um, food is non-threatening. And it's a great way to make friends. And particularly at the Festival of Nations, where they have about 125,000 people coming through in a, in a given um, weekend. So it was important to us to have a falafel, um, hummus, um, yaprakas, grape leaves. Uh, even though you could find it elsewhere, we wanted to have it, our Israeli flag so they could come up and ask questions and, and get to know who we are. And we also had some Israeli dancing at these festivals and just the cultural arts is, is a natural um, extension. It's a, it's a way to introduce people to um, Israelis, Israeli society, and, and just the wealth of, of traditions that makes up our Jewish landscape. Danny, are we going to get the link for the uh, chocolate balls? So that's really, Rachel, you're going to, if you want to email me the link, I can send it to Elio. You mean these, Elio? <laughs> Creighton's eating all of them. <laughs> yes, I will. I, I, I sent um, the actual recipe in, in, a, in a doc, but we can talk afterwards how to do it. I see mom. Hi, mom. You're on mute though, mom. Love you. I can't hear you, but I, I can imagine what you're saying. That's just a matter of uh, years and years of cooking. That's that is not good. Good. <laughs> Beautiful, Richie. Love you, mom. I love you so much. <laughs> So if anybody has any questions after we get off the live, um, maybe Danny can include my email or my phone or, or you can reach out to me and I'm happy to um, chat with you anytime. And thanks again for letting me be a part of this. Oh, thank you. So um, yeah, why don't you email me your um, the, the dessert and um, I'll send it to Elliot and we can send it out to the group that registered, the whole, cook, the whole cooking group that, uh, that's part of, part of this. Excellent, and, then, and now I can watch the next, um, the next cooking event. Yeah, so we, this, this will be, uh, this is recorded. So we're, it's gonna uh, eventually, I'm having some technical problems, but once I figure them out, I'll upload this into the uh, FJMC YouTube page. This will be the third one. I have now three in the queue. But I'm having. Thank you, Mitch. But so once we Danny's get it up, fault. it's Danny's fault. <laughs> Danny was a technical problem. No. Yeah, no, no, not on this part. On the not the, on some, this part. It's something's, all crazy. Something's not connecting from my computer to the YouTube, but eventually someone will figure it out. Alan Button or someone. Hopefully. I feel like we're all smarter in some way. Like I learned something about sharing on the computer today from Lisa. Um, Creighton learned how to make 
Oh, do you want to oh he, he did take the pita stuff out of the oven, so. Creighton doesn't have to learn anything. Creighton knows everything. Doesn't need to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just ask my wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what thank you. Todaima. And Yomat's Maut Sameh. Happy Independence Day. Yeah. Yomat's Maut Sameh. Oh, we used to dance all night. Right. Years ago, we used to dance the whole night. After Yom, after uh, the Yom Hazikaron, uh, then we all went and danced and danced. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing it now. The, nowadays, do they do it now? They, I don't they, think so. They do. They, they do it now. Every si every city or town in Israel tonight, and with the end of of the COVID and restrictions in Israel, is is um. Uh, they have their own live performances outside and, and uh, there are performances of Israeli dance also. And it's nice. really beautiful. Yeah, so that's Wonderful. that's a great time to be in Israel is for Yom HaTzmaut. Oh, yes. Maybe yeah. next year. Maybe, Maybe next, next year. year. Next year, yeah. No, 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 next year in Jerusalem, right? No, next year. No, I was supposed to go last year, so maybe next year. There you go. Um, so for me, when we say next year in Jerusalem, for me, Israel really is Jerusalem. But for my son who is there, he just got out of the army. He prefers the Merkaz, where all the action is, Tel Aviv, Giva time, and so on. And my mom actually, um, she was born in Egypt, but she grew up in Batyam. So for her, that's her 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 fondest memories are, are growing up in, in Batyam by wow. the sea. Yeah. I <laughs> oh, see so your mom was born in Egypt. Born in Egypt, her family before that in Izmir in Turkey. And my dad's family is uh, from Russia and, well, not Russia actually, actually Ukraine and, um, and Poland. And after that, Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah, we have, right. uh, that's our biggest men's club from FJMC is in Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> is that a joke or is that for real? It's a joke. Yeah. No, no, but I'm gullible, I'll believe in you. No, the Jewish. <laughs> There used it's to be active there. Yes. Yeah. Good. Tell them to join us. We'd be happy. Fun. Why not? Well, actually, what's interesting is is when my grandparents there, when my dad was growing up, there's a there was a um, an Orthodox congregation and a Reform congregation. In and Fargo? my grandparents belonged to both, but there was no conservative, so so no no good men's club, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you. This one right now. Creighton, you have last words? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. I cannot thank you enough. And Lisa as well. Lisa's thank the you. best. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. Come say hi. Yeah. And even yeah. Rabbi. They already saw me on the other one. My son heard free samples. So. <laughs> Who's this guy with the Yankees thing? That's, the, that's me. That's the rabbi? Rabbi, yeah. The Yankees? Good thing Kravitz got off. Kravitz got off the call. So Red Sox are going to go 159 and three this year. I've been a Yankee fan my whole life. So okay. even though I'm in St. Louis, but at least, as long as I'm not a Cubs fan here, they accept me. So. I, I believe it. <laughs> oh. well, thanks for doing the program. It was, it was Thank you very much, Rabbi. We were watching Thank at home, so it was great. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Lila everybody. Lila Tov. Thank you for the opportunity. Lila Tov. Good night, everyone. Good night. Wait, Danny, we signing off? I'm still here. I know. We lost our crowd here, though. We're down to six, Elliot. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do this next time. It's still good. They stayed on. It was fine. Well, you know, what we wanted to talk about was, you know, future programs. Yeah, we'll have to figure this out a little bit, how we're kind of um, maybe structure the post thing a little bit. Is Jay still, I mean, his picture's there. Yeah, it's just here and me. Oh, well, okay. Well, we'll have to try it again next time. For the yeah. Kid. Yeah. Maybe we'll um, have some sort of a post.
post webinar agenda with objectives and what we want to um, what we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, this was good. So, all right. And I, I am having trouble with the YouTube. I can't get it to, it's, it's on my computer, but I can't get it to download it. I don't know why. So I'll need some kind of computer guy to help me. So. All right, well, I guess we're done for tonight. All right, have a good night. Thanks. Yeah, you too, stay well. You too, bye-bye.